Welcome to this exciting episode of Enlightened Masculinity, everybody. This is the show to come to when you have topics of masculinity, of enlightenment, of the modern mystical masculine male, and how to be a man in today's society, but also retain some of that spiritual wisdom that you know that you're seeking. I'm one of your hosts, Yogi Chris PhD. I'm the founder of Ninth Limb Yoga. This podcast is hosted by Ninth Limb Yoga, so shout out, hashtag Ninth Limb. I'm also, you know, PhD in the human universities. I've published many books. I host a few podcasts, and I travel the world teaching my brand of yoga, Ninth Limb Yoga, which has really infused a lot of communication. And that's what we're talking about today. This episode, we're talking about NLP. We're talking about game. Game meaning social dynamics, how men attract women, how to develop courtship and uh, relationships and sexual abundance and also retain that masculine leadership and the mystic, mystical enlightenment that we you know, are pursuing. So I'll quickly introduce my co-host and then we'll introduce our guest. My co-host, he's from Claire, New Jersey. He's a biotech research analyst for some of the biggest drug dealers in the world up there in New England, North, I don't know if New Jersey counts as New England officially. And he's also a registered yoga teacher. He's starting his yoga following there in Montclair, New Jersey called the Rising Suns. And welcome to the show, Akash Intikatakam. What's going on? Yogi Chris, brother, thank you so much for the illustrious introduction, as always. Uh, today, I want to talk and introduce a, a man that I've been uh, noticing uh, on the internet. He is the founder of Naturally Seductive, um, an NLP expert and a pickup artist who's been studying the game for quite some time. I'm very excited to introduce uh, our special guest today, Francis Ra. So Francis, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, what got you interested in NLP to begin with? Uh, Akash, it's an honor to be on the show first off. Thank you. I've, uh, a student of mine years ago introduced me to your work and I, I, I've been into it. Anyway, uh, I started off, I wasn't even able to talk to another human being. Uh, it was bad. You know, I was looking at my feet. I, I'd been bullied by everybody. And it was like, I just couldn't be me anymore. And, and I, I stumbled on uh, some of Ross Jeffrey's stuff. I just dove in and started to learn how to, how to reprogram myself. Uh, began to see the observations and just continued to move forward and learn more and more. I mean, I, I became ravenous for knowledge after a while. It was just, and uh, I just continued. Brought it into the game, got into uh, doing some approaches, and then I started to see what kind of an effect I could have on people. Began to watch people closer, had girlfriends, and got to really get to understand who they really were, what they really, what, what was in a, what was it that, that could make it, what was it, how could you get a woman's pussy wet? You know, the question, how do you get a woman's pussy wet? You know, with your words or, or with your presence, like what is it about a man that a woman could just look at and she knows that she's got to have that man. What is it about a man that could have a one night stand with a woman and it changes her life? And there's other men who, 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 who she feels dirty after she's been with. What are the differences in these men? What, are, what kind of experiences, you know? So, I mean, I just got very, very curious, you know, and I, I, I didn't rest until I got answers. Yeah. Man, that's super interesting. So let's just jump right into that, man. You know, as you're talking about, uh, you know, first of all, uh, talking about Ross Jeffries is one of the early pioneers in the ideas of, uh, you know, modern game. I think game has probably been a word that's been around for a long time. I think people used to always refer to guys that have good game, they have bad game. That's definitely a term that came before uh, official code codifying of game as a thing. You know, we're kind of nerds over here, like codifying like guys and girls and like, get to level two kind of level level up kind of you know but you know when you're talking about you were observing different kind of guys and guys that seem to have it or they seem to you know the girls would feel better after being with them like they improved versus the the guys that they would regret afterwards that they felt dirty or they they regretted you know being seduced or whatever like that what in your um research what did you find were the differences in those kinds of guys what did you discover uh for the most part, okay, there was a lot of, um, there was empathy. Men who, who had great empathy, who have great empathy, a, a empathetic connection with a woman is, is life-changing. Like that, that's what she's really, really seeking. 
is a, is a, is an empathetic, non-judgmental connection with a man. And that's a life-changing experience for both a man and a woman to have that. Now, but I mean, men who who see if you're if you're stuck inside your head and you're stuck inside your prefrontal cortex, you're just voices in your head and you're only thinking about you. You're you're, you're self-absorbed. You can't have empathy. It completely stops that that from taking place. And so. I, I, that's where I really think it is, is empathy. Oh. Yeah, so you saw that guys that had empathy, the girls liked being with them, but the guys that didn't have empathy, they regretted it later? Yeah, well, I, I seen it in myself, is that the more empathy I developed, the more of like, uh, the more the game could happen. It was like I was communicating almost on like a, a psychic kind of level with women with empathy, just by observing them openly. I would observe a woman openly and I, I'd notice that she'd notice me. And it was like, how the hell's that happening? Right? Now, I was noticing that I was having an effect on people when I'd pay attention to them and stuff. Yeah. And so then as I started to, to play with my own feelings, Okay, that, that's a little more than what I, I want to get into. I, but I, I, I know Akash is eating that up. I, I know Akash loves that. I, I, what did you think about what he just said, Akash? Yeah, it's, it's actually really interesting, Francis, that you mentioned that. I just put a uh, little exercise for some of our, our members in the group just yesterday, very much around uh, this type of topic. Um, again, the whole idea of what you see outside of you um, is what you're seeking, but also that we have the ability to change what we want to see in the world. So. When we yep. pay more attention to something, it, it becomes more apparent. Um, in regards to game, um, can you elaborate, I guess, a bit more on this topic of uh, oftentimes men will, will see that when they go out, they'll, it's one thing to get over even just approaching someone and, and getting over that fear. But yep. then once they get over that fear, then there's a whole, well, I don't know if I'm good enough or I don't know if I'd be able to serve to talk to this person. Can you talk or elaborate a little bit more about this? Yeah, I'm going to tell you, okay, the whole game is this. And this is the, 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 the meat and potatoes of the whole game. Self-love. If you can't look in the mirror and say, I love who the fuck I am today. If you can't look in the mirror and say, oh, my, I, I love being me. I love to be me. How do you expect somebody else to fall in love with you? You have to be able to look at yourself and say, oh, my God, I, I'm thankful to be me. I'm cool. And whatever it takes so that you can become a man that you can feel that way about, you have to do. And you should be doing that before you should approach a woman. Otherwise, what are you bringing? Right? I mean, I look at it. They see, the whole thing of the game, I, I've got my entire approach to the game is different than, than anything you're going to hear from anybody. Because what, I, what I've also noticed about women, you know, and about, about the, the, the whole thing is that she doesn't want to be the prize. You, the, we, we walking up and, and trying to impress her in any way is the wrong way to go. It's about drawing her in. She wants to meet the man who pulls her in. And that's how I, that's what I try to that's what I try to develop. Okay, it's like how do you become that man who she who she notices and she's just she has to get his attention. You know that's I, I man. You know, and the evolutionary biology would tell us that the women historically date up and the men date down. Meaning, women are looking for a man that's better than they are to date. Yeah. Man will do that. A man will look for a woman that looks up to him and say, okay, and if there's the attraction there and all the ingredients that he yeah. wants, take her with him, take her under his wing, protect her through life, and here deliver her at the end of her life happy, like safe. Okay. Probably now, in a, way, a lot of resources. In a way, in a way, you're right, but nah, I, I was a MGTOW monk for like a year and a half, man, and I drank red, red pill knowledge, and, uh, and, I, and I, I looked at the world, and I, and I used it in my own observations and what I'd noticed is that men have it wrong of what the woman's actually, what's actually important to the woman completely wrong. See, she's what's important to her is experience. So if she has experience, if she, if she feels like she's with the King, that's how the, that's how the pimp is able to do what he does. How she's able to do what she does to she bring him. She wants the money. King's experience. She doesn't want the bum's she's, experience. That's right. Even if she's living in a box though, with that King, she'd rather be living in a box with that King. Than in a mansion with a bum, if you yeah, know what I mean. Yeah, because the king lives differently. The experience that that man provides, the emotional experience 
it doesn't matter about what what surrounds she doesn't care about what you got she don't care about taking the bus believe me man i take the bus <laughs> you know what i mean it, it, it's not material gains you see the one thing that migtail has wrong is it ain't about the material wealth that she cares well, about she let me ask care you francis let me ask you francis if you had an identical twin that was exactly like you in every way but your twin had a million more dollars than you would that play a role in the attraction Fuck no! I'd draw. I'd be. I'd kick his ass. Still, he's Either. exactly like you. He's exactly I, I like. Care. I would still fuck his girlfriend. I would still fuck his girlfriend. So his million dollars, having the same skills as you, and being exactly. Absolutely as not. I would you. still fuck his girlfriend. Uh, if he went to the bathroom, if he went to the bathroom, and wasn't looking and watching, I'd swoop right in well, and take let her. Let me ask you: if you were with, if you were with your girl out. And you know yeah. there was another very skilled pickup artist in the venue right there. Would you go to the bathroom and leave her? Fuck yeah. These guys don't know how you do it. Name one pickup artist that's teaching how to get a woman's pussy wet. Well, actually, there is a couple. There is a couple, and I respect them much. Those guys, I wouldn't want to leave them around with my girlfriend. But oh, yeah. any of these guys that don't, that don't bring in a wet pussy into the equation aren't really talking the same kind of game I'm talking, man. Truly. That's right. Truly. Francis, you brought something up that was interesting to me. You said it was, it's very much about the experience that a man creates for a woman. Can you yeah. delve deeper into what types of experiences are men to provide for women? Okay. Emotions. Emotions, emotions, emotions. Okay, now this is human beings function on emotions. Right? We love that. We don't want to feel like, we're be, like we've been manipulated. But when it feels like it's like things have just happened, and you can you can kind of weave a whole story out of emotions, a whole experience in the mind of somebody, an emotional experience that they feel, <laughs> and it, you know what I mean? You've got that no matter what. You can paint if you have the, the ability to make anything feel good, to make anything feel like an exciting adventure to make living in a box or living under a bridge into an exciting adventure in the mind of that person and make them feel excited, train them to, to feel that way. You're good. Well, like, now, isn't, that convincing, really love isn't that convincing a woman that a plastic sword is really made of metal? All depending how good. No, not really. Because you see, it's only your judgment that makes the experience of the wealthy man more desirable see in, in fact each experience is just as valuable it has just as much to learn of the homeless man and the millionaire it's really? only your judgment that makes one more desirable than the other yeah well shouldn't well, a millionaire be more desirable than a experiences and just as trivial both men are gonna die both men are gonna die yeah right? but they're different they're not equal value well, but each each one will leave each yeah that's right they're both different but which, which, what do either one of them really leave behind? It all depends on which ones. See, I've got a different philosophy on that too. I, I like to be very, very cognizant of the fact that I'm going to die one day. Right. right. Right? And what am I doing with the time from now until that time? Right? Who am I? What, what, it doesn't matter what I got. It doesn't matter what, I, what money I have or what car I drive or what house I have. Those, those are not even considerations to me at all. I don't even care. Why? The experience or my name or any of that doesn't matter either. What matters is who am I and what do I represent during that time? You see, it's a, it's a value thing. Right. It is the philosophy so you're valuing that your reputation. You know your reputation. Do you consider, Francis, as a spiritual man, we're talking, and Akash, I want your take on this too, if you would. Do you consider your reputation a material possession? Yes, it is. Okay. So there you go. So you don't value cars and money and houses. You value reputation. That's no, it's not. No, no, I don't value reputation. What I oh, value, you don't value reputation. Is, no, what I value is what I represent, or like the realness, the truth, the inner core of what I am and what my time here on this planet means. Yeah, but how what do people know what you what represent? Do I have? Or what I, okay, here's a more way, clear way of saying it. What effect do I have in this realm? Yeah, that's called power, brother. That's right. Well, what effect do I have? So 
do if I come here and I don't have any effect or if I have a negative effect, you can't come into this world and not have some kind of an effect. So yeah. you're always having an effect one way or another. And it's yeah. like, okay, what is my effect? How do I affect the people around me? How do I affect the world around me? Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's where that's why that's where I'm at right now in in my life, really. Is cool. just having fun. Like actually you know what's funny? I mean, it was just a, about two weeks ago I was on the bus and I was talking to somebody and then I ended up say I just started to say hi to people. I said, Why is it weird for me to be on the bus and why is it weird to say hi to people? It's, it's a, even to acknowledge that we're surrounded by people. We got a, a bus completely full of people. Why is it weird for me to say hi to you? Why is it weird for me to look over at you and say hi? And all of a sudden, people started talking to each other. And people started to actually wave hi as well. And I got the whole bus talking to each other just by this big speech that just came out of nowhere. I was like, why is it weird? I have a question. Why is it weird to acknowledge and to say hi to people when you've got a whole bus full of people and everybody's pretending that nobody's that everybody's alone, that we're alone on that bus? All right. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. Francis, one of the things that I've observed about you in the time that I've uh, been seeing some of your content, even through this, this interview itself, is you have a really good sense of what you were like as a child or what you were like as a kid. Can you talk, or this is what it seems like, at least to me, can you talk a little bit about that? Getting in touch with that inner child within the self, getting in uh, touch with that imaginative spirit. Where does this come from? That came, actually, you know what, that actually came from just loving myself and the realizing that I am going to die one day and that life is more, is not about, I don't know, life is about the experience of it. And, and if you're happy and you're enjoying life, God is experiencing it. My whole philosophy is that all is in the all and the all is in all. So I am God experiencing this world as Francis Ra. So Whatever the experience is, no matter what it is, if I feel good about it, then I'm offering God a good experience. <laughs> That's just me in my own deeper philosophies. I know we've come way off the game here and we're talking some spiritual stuff. But, I mean, this is just my philosophy on life. And so then I started to feel, say thank you. I started to just say thank you all the time to the sun for shining, to the water for being there for me to drink, for, for flowing out of the tap so I could wash my hands. You know, and I started to whistle at the birds and I started whistling back. And I was like, wow, you know what? If you whistle at the birds and they whistle back, that means God's pleased with you. I don't know how I know that, but I figure that God is everything. He's under every blade, every rock and every blade of grass. He's up in the trees and he is those birds. So if I'm whistling at the birds and they whistle back, I figure God likes me. <laughs> My way. <of> the <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. I, I think of that that way. too. I'm curious. You talk about self-love a lot and loving yourself. Uh, I'm sure you probably got a lot of um, processes and techniques for that. Uh, but, yeah. for, you know, for a free podcast, uh, anybody listening to this now or later, like what are some ways, you know, I almost like the advice of just be yourself, bro. And it's like, well, what else have I been my whole life? And it's like, well, just love yourself, bro. And it's like, well, what do you mean by that? Like, so what would you tell someone? Yeah. All right, I'm going to give you guys some power right here. Okay, cool. Okay, you can do affirmations. Affirmations, but practice feeling those affirmations so i mean you tell yourself hey i am a motherfucker i love me feel it when you say it feel it when you say it feel it affirmations and feeling good practice self-love is not something that's that's a casual thing you have to sit down and practice it practice loving yourself practice feeling loving yourself now you're beginning to, to manipulate your subconscious for the first time okay now, another thing is that you can, however it is, when you want to go talk to a stranger, it's not about impressing them at all. It's observe how you feel when you say, when you walk over and you go to talk to somebody and realize that, see, mere neurons are a thing. The emotional contagion is a thing. So when you walk up to a person and you're feeling nervous, they're, fucking, they're feeling that nervousness off of you. So if you, if, you walk, if you practice just feeling more comfortable, that person will feel more comfortable when you approach them. And it'll, it'll change your life because people will, will actually become more excited to have you approach them and have you talk to them. How do you practice feeling more comfortable? Well, think about it right now. Okay, you can, if you think about it in your mind right now, a stressful situation, you can practice stress. Right? You can think about stress. You can imagine how it feels. Just imagine it in your mind and you, you feel it just by imagining it. And then you can just imagine calming it. 
Just imagine yourself when you were calm. Remember what it feels like to feel calm. Just remember what it feels like to feel calm. Think about being calm. And a mind just kind of does it on its own. Yeah. You just think about being calm. You just, what is it like to be calm? Ask yourself the question, what is it like to be calm? And all of a sudden, your mind will just give you that answer and you'll begin to feel calm. Yeah, definitely. Now, Francis, I want to take this a slightly bit of a different direction. Um, another thing that I've noticed, and, and you do well, in, in my opinion, is you have no issue saying what your thoughts are. You have no issue expressing yourself, your words, what's going on in your mind, what's going on around you. What's, I remember for a time in my life, there was a time where I just shut down and decided that I'm not going to share with the world what I'm experiencing. It sounds like you've gone through a very similar experience earlier on in life. Oh yeah. Where did that point happen? What happened where, you decided to unlock things and be who you are, speak your truth, express yourself. It happened slowly. It happened slowly. Now it started, uh, I mean, it started off. I mean, I, I, what was it that I first did? I wore my, I wore briefs outside of my pants. It's the first time I challenged myself. It started off as conditioning myself to become more and more comfortable in stressful situations. Because I, I was unable to even look at a human being. It was brutal for me, man. I was always bullied as a kid. I, was, I had a real rough, uh, real rough. I, did, I was alone my whole life, right? And I was desperate to meet people. So I started challenging myself, becoming more and more comfortable. And then it, it just became, it became easier. Like, it just naturally, naturally kind of, it's just like, as I became more comfortable with, with these challenges, and it began to change me because my, my level that I was able to child to take, but the level of, of stress I was able to, to, to endure would grow stronger and stronger. Then I was able to talk to people. Then I was, you know what I mean? I did all these weird things and it, just to be able to talk to people. And then I, I got a sales job when I was, I remember when I first got into sales, my brother actually said to me, he said, Rod, you're the most insecure person I've ever met. What are you doing getting into sales? And I'm like, I'm the most insecure person you've ever met. Like, of course I, I need to fix this. <laughs> you know what I mean? I got to get this fixed. You know, and it was like, it was so bad for me. I couldn't even like hug a relative, man. You know what I mean? Like my mom, I, I didn't, I couldn't even hug my mom. You know what I mean? I couldn't go to like family functions. I couldn't go anywhere, man. I just needed, I just wanted to be alone. I, my life was, was like, my, my experience with human beings was they were just abusive mostly because, but I knew that I could master it. I knew that other people had talked to people. I wasn't giving up hope. I wasn't giving up hope. And I was like, I know that I can become a cool guy to talk to. Like I've met people and they liked me, but then for whatever reason, they always, end up not liking me anymore. I'm like, and they end up disrespecting me. It's gotta be something that I'm doing. And that's another thing too. I came up with, I realized that I have no power over what people do. Anybody does. I only have power over what I do. But what I do influences how they treat me and how they act towards me. And so by influencing myself, I can influence them. And then I started to realize that by the, the, my interactions with the outside world, that I could actually, by presenting myself as being a certain way, that people started to just become more, more give me more attention and become more warm to me. Like the whole world began to respond to me. Like the, I don't know, it's like, and then I like to think about like particles and quantum physics, quantum mechanics, and all these things. Like I'm really into the physics, and I start to look at it, and I'm like, all right, is there? I mean. You know, is it actually just uh, like a video game or something? Or, or is, it, is it actually what it seems like? What is it? You know what I mean? And you start to wonder about reality itself. Man, man, man. You know, uh, that's super, like, here, here's what I'd like to say. Let's, uh, let's split this up. Let's, uh, we'll kind of do the outro right now. And we'll have you back for the next episode, which will be right now. But it'll be today. So everybody watching this iTunes, leave us a comment, leave a review, screenshot it, send it to either Akash or I, and we got a special video for you, a private video, technical, uh, you know, it's actually very similar to what you're talking about, some, you know, affirmations uh, for how to feel good, and we're going to have Francis Raw back in the next episode, we're going to talk about some quantum physics, some insecurity, and, and some game, you know, we're going to get you some techniques, so 
Also, if you're catching this, you can always go to our Facebook group, the uh, Enlightened Masculinity, it's just two words, Enlightened Masculinity, and you'll get some free training from Akash and I, and we also do a monthly lecture there that is mind-blowing. So thanks, Francis, and we'll have you right back on uh, right after this. Thanks, for Francis, having me. would you please uh, let us know what's the best way to catch you on social media before we close? Oh, yeah, good, good, cool. Good, cool. Uh -huh. Facebook is really my biggest thing. You could you could join the Facebook group called Naturally Seductive and friend me up. Uh, add me a friend request. Uh, and you can even uh, Instagram at Great Bird Raw. Uh, Great Bird Raw, one word. You can uh, you can find me on on there. Those are my main things. My my YouTube is kind of lacking. I'm getting there, but I only got 58 subscribers. I'm, but it's all full of mind movies and tools. It's actually real tools that you can use, hypnosis, mind movies. Uh, you can find me Francis Ross. So those are my place. Oh, yeah. Awesome. All right. We'll see you guys right back after.